Hello, I'm Professor McCoy, and seeing as everyone and their mother has given some thoughts on The Last Jedi, I think I probably should finally as well. Now, hopefully this will be a uh, relatively short review, at least relative to just some other others that I respect a great deal, by the way, but that aside, I want to talk about something that I, uh, first, on first viewing, thought might have been a really, really solid point. But then upon reflection, I noticed other parts of the film were rather contradictory to it. Uh, and that is, uh, well, the thesis of this video, as indicated by the title, being that The Last Jedi, and, and I think largely, um, we'll see moving forward, but uh, largely the current view of the Jedi is a comparatively Protestant view of uh, of the Jedi as an order, rather than uh, what has traditionally been a Catholic or at least broadly apostolic view. So what do I mean by that? It all, I think, comes down to uh, the, the interaction with and the treatment of the the sacred Jedi texts on Octo. So when I saw the scene where uh, Master Yoda shows up as a Force ghost and destroys the sacred Jedi texts uh, that Luke was thinking about destroying himself, but eventually gets distraught about having been destroyed, we see, I think, or at least I thought at the time, a very interesting, a very traditionalistic, let's say, um, way of looking at the Jedi teachings. And so when Yoda says to, that he instructed Luke to pass on what he'd learned, what I took that to mean, and I think that what that reasonably meant at the time and would have meant in the context of The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and even of the prequels, is that what Yoda taught to Luke was how to be a Jedi. He taught Luke. He, he didn't just teach Luke particular facts about the Force. He inducted Luke into an ancient holy order of warrior monks, the Jedi. Yoda passed on to Luke what he learned and expected Luke to pass on what he learned to the next generation. And so what we should expect to see in a situation like this is Luke perhaps trying to find out more about the, the ancient traditions of the Jedi Fair enough, which is what he did in the expanded universe, certainly. And even to some degree, what was uh, what we're, we're talking about with the sacred Jedi texts on Octo and all of them. But first and foremost, what he should be doing is finding people to whom he can pass on the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, and of course the practice and the the order itself that he had received. He was inducted into the order by a Jedi. He will then induct new Jedi into this order, and the order will continue moving forward. There is a continuity from the Jedi of the Old Republic, a thousand generations prior, all the way through the various Jedi purges, because there have been more than one, at least in the, uh, the Old Expanded Universe, but even if not, there certainly was a continuity of Jedi all the way through those who uh, survived Order 66, that being at the very least, that we knew of in the, the original trilogy, Obi-Wan and Yoda. They remained Jedi, and that they passed on not just what they had what not not just what they knew, not just knowledge, not just uh not just theory about the force, and not just ancient practices that they handed to Luke, right? Luke didn't get a book from either of them. What Luke got is training. And an initiation into this ancient 25,000 year old order. And the expectation that they placed upon him was to continue this, was to pass on what he'd learned. In other words, to not simply to hand off the information, but to pass the torch, to light the flame in others that they had kindled in him. This is a traditionalistic understanding of tradition. This is a, I should say, a Catholic understanding of tradition. And I, I always like the analogy of a growing tree. That a tree grows when it's alive. 
And so for a tree to be alive is not for it to remain the same. It is for it to change. Right? The tree grows, it expands, it grows in new directions, it sprouts new buds and new leaves, and it sows new seeds. All of this means that it's alive. The fact that it's changing means that it's living. But at the same time, it still has to be the same tree. If you were to chop off a branch, you're doing damage to the tree. Yes, you're changing it, but you're changing it unnaturally. If you were to shape the tree in a way that is inimical to its natural form, you're damaging the tree. If you want to try to make something new out of the tree, you're going to have to kill it first. And so this is how tradition traditionally works, is that when traditions grow, when they change, it has to be internal and organic. It grows from within, from what it already is, and it, it, it grows like an organism, rather than growing like passing on, uh, or, or rather than shaping it into something new, something unrelated entirely. It's the difference between a tree growing and then providing shade versus a tree being cut down and formed into a deck with an awning, which you can do. That's a thing that can happen, right? You can cut down a tree, you can saw it into planks, and you can use it as an awning. It'll provide shade in that way, but you're providing shade. You're not, the tree isn't. The tree's dead. So changing what the thing is in a fundamental or an essential way is inimical to the traditional way of tradition being passed on. But so is keeping the thing in its original state. Petrifying or calcifying the thing. If a tree is petrified, if it never develops, if it never changes, it's also dead. It's not a living tree. It's only a living tree when it grows naturally and organically and it develops in this sort of a way. And the same applies to a tradition. So the Jedi tradition, in this case, <clears throat> is growing, changing, and developing, depending upon its environmental circumstances, depending upon the individuals that make it up, and depending upon the will of the Force. The Jedi in the New Republic, Luke's New Jedi Order, is not the same as the Jedi were in the Clone Wars. And the Jedi during the Clone Wars were not the same that they were before the Rusan Reformation. And they're not the same as they were in the old days of the Old Republic, either. These are different orders, but they're the same order. The order is different because the galaxy around it is different. It's different because it has grown, because it has changed itself. It's not different because it's been picked up and placed elsewhere and shifted around and altered. It isn't that. It's changed in the way that I've changed over the last few years. Or over the last 30-something years. I'm not exactly the same as I was when I was a small child, but I'm the same person. If you were to get rid of me and replace me with someone else that would be a much more significant difference. Even if that someone else were in every other way identical to me, it would still be a more significant difference than me growing and changing as I have over the course of my life. So with this in mind, if we look at this contrast point between, between what Yoda, or at least part of what Yoda has to say to Luke, this idea that what he's meant to do, what he ought to be doing, is to pass on what, he, what he's learned, to initiate new Jedi into the Order, to keep this living flame burning, to keep this living thing growing, rather than a complete cutoff and an attempted, <clears throat> an attempted reform or reformation. We're getting into the Protestantism analogy here. We see the alternative, which is going back to the source, going back to the first Jedi Temple, going back to the ancient Jedi texts. What this implies is a kind of, not a return to tradition, but a return to a foundation. A good analogy, sticking with our previous analogy, a good a way of tying this in, I suppose, to the tree analogy, would be to say if we want to, we want to see what is fundamental to the tree, we need to cut it down and see what's at the root. Fine, but you've killed the tree. 
Now maybe you can plant one of the tree's acorns in the stump, and it will grow again. Maybe that's something like what Luke is doing, or attempting to do. Or perhaps now what Rey is attempting to do, now that she's taken these ancient Jedi texts and gone her own way with them. The problem with this, of course, is that it's not the Jedi Order anymore. Because the Jedi Order is not those ancient texts anymore. Jedi Order, in 20-something ABY, is not the Jedi Order of 20-something thousand BBY. Now, it's the same order. It's the same contiguous organism, so to speak. But it's not doesn't have all of the same qualities. And if you try and replicate the ancient qualities of a tradition and try and place them back into a new start, you're starting over. You're not continuing anything. You're destroying what came before and starting anew. It's anti-traditionalist to go back to the primitive version of something. Now, we have, we have analogous versions of this in our world today, and this is where especially the Protestantism metaphor comes in, is there's a significant strain uh, of modern Protestantism, which is what's called primitivist. Their goal, their fundamental goal, is to try as, as best they can to replicate what was in the early church, and to take that and place it into today's world, and do what was done at the beginning, but do it now. The problem with that is that you're not continuing Christianity. You're not even recovering Christianity. You're starting over. You're starting your own thing. Because Christianity is apostolic Christianity. Christianity is the church. And the church has grown, it's developed, and it's changed, and it's it's it has been, and again, to continue the analogy of the Jedi, it's been guided by the will of God and by the Holy Spirit. In a certain particular way, through all of history to what we have today, which is the church, right? And to try and get rid of all of that and get back to basics, so to speak, is not to get back to basics, it's to get to something entirely new. It's to abandon tradition in favor of, well, an imitation of the beginning of that tradition. It's killing the tradition. Now, unfortunately, Unfortunately for, I suppose, the the, uh, the lore of the Jedi and the franchise moving forward and all of our hope for <laughs> for the new canon version of, of uh, the Star Wars saga, that does seem to be the direction that they've gone with it. They are, as far as I can tell, we'll, we'll see, I suppose, uh, when it comes to the, uh, the upcoming, the upcoming, or presumably upcoming, we'll see, <laughs> I suppose, uh, films about uh, Rey's Jedi Order and the origin of the Jedi. But it seems to me that the direction they're going is starting over with something new. And questioning even whether that new thing needs to happen or how it ought to happen. And bringing in new, uh, bringing in elements of the current society rather than bringing in the tradition that has survived for a thousand generations in this case. So what we see or what I expect to see, I suppose, is a radical departure from the tradition of the Jedi. Just like in a lot of Protestant traditions, what we see is a radical departure from the traditions of the Church. In an attempt, still, to recover what once was, but with an admixture of what is, out, but is outside of the tradition. So, again, by analogy, in the, our real-world part of the analogy, what we see is... Uh, is these these Protestant movements, uh, the primitivist types of Protestant movements that try to to recover elements of the early church and to reinstantiate them in today, but they get they get influence brought in from aspects of our modern secular culture as well, and that is not just alien to the tradition of the church, but it's alien to what they're trying to recover as well. And so what they're doing essentially is they're starting something new today in our modern particular context. And I think that that is probably what we're likely to see with Rey's Jedi. She is starting something over, starting something new on, on what she attempts, what she hopes is, the same foundation as the Jedi Order of old, of 25,000 years ago. 
But ultimately, and we've gotten hints at this from uh, from a lot of writers and directors and a lot of people from Lucasfilm, that a lot of it is going to be influenced by the state of the galaxy at the time. That that is going to play a significant role in how she reestablishes the Jedi as a new order. And so I think that this is a another, if we need another reason, uh, to be concerned about the trajectory of Star Wars from a narrative standpoint and from a from a mythological standpoint, from a symbolic standpoint, and really from a spiritual standpoint, if we're uh, or a religious standpoint, if we're going in that direction as well. I think that, uh, and also, well, I think that this is a uh, another reason to, uh, as if we need another reason, to look poorly back on The Last Jedi. Anyway, as I said, a relatively short video with a collection of thoughts on an aspect of The Last Jedi that I don't think has really been discussed too much, and something that I'm uh, I'm perhaps well positioned to talk about, to uh, to look at. So hopefully this was informative both uh, both in the real world and in the context of, uh, of some of the stories that we love so much. At least uh, at least I certainly have loved so much. Uh, and hopefully we uh, we can continue the discussion. I hope that you do. Uh, join me down in the Discord uh, and talk about it. Uh, join me down in the comments section. I'll be, um, I'll be happy to read anything and respond. And until next time, 